Hello and welcome to another episode of Current Affairs MCQ. Let's begin with the previous day's question. Consider the following statements regarding hing cultivation. 1. Hing is a perennial herb of the Apiaceae family and its resin is extracted only after the plant matures for around 5 years. 2. It thrives in cold, arid climates, making regions like Iran, Afghanistan and India's Lahore Spiti and Uttarakhand ideal for its cultivation. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? A. One only. B. Two only. C. Both one and two. D. Neither one nor two. The correct answer is option C. Hing. This plant is a perennial herb belonging to the Umbelliferae family. The oleo gum resin extracted from the plant's thick root after five years of maturity forms the edible asphodida used in culinary and medicinal applications. Hence statement 1 is correct. Hing thrives in cold arid climates making regions like Iran, Afghanistan and India's Lahore Spiti and Uttarakhand ideal for its cultivation. Hence statement 2 is correct. The plant prefers sandy and well-drained soils with minimal moisture. It requires temperature between 10 to 20 degrees Celsius but can tolerate extremes of 40 degrees Celsius in the heat. and minus 4 degrees celsius in the cold hence option c is the correct answer moving on to the first question consider the following statements regarding india's public distribution system one pds is solely managed by the central government which handles procurement storage transportation allocation and distribution of food grains two Anna Chakra is a supply chain optimization tool in PDS to reduce transport distances. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? A. One only. B. Two only. C. Both one and two. D. Neither one nor two. The correct answer is option B. Public distribution system. The PDS is a food security mechanism that provides essential food grains at subsidized rates to vulnerable populations. It is governed by the NFSA 2013 covering about 2/3 of the population based on census 2011. PDS is jointly managed by the center and states or union territories. The central government through Food Cooperation of India oversees procurement, storage, transportation and bulk allocation of food grains while the state governments handle local distribution beneficiary identification ration card issuance and fair price shop operations hence statement 1 is not correct anna chakra is a supply chain optimization tool for the pds to reduce transport distances by 15 to 50% and save rupees 250 cr annually hence statement 2 is correct hence option b is the correct answer question 2 consider the following temples 1 meenakshi temple in madurai 2 arangnatha temple in shri rangam 3 vijay narayan temple in nanguneri 4 brihadeshwar temple in tanjavur how many of the above were patronized by the pandyas a only 1 b only 2 c only 3 d all four the correct answer is option c temples patronized by pandyas minakshi temple madurai aranganatha temple shri rangam vijay narayan temple nanguneri lakshmi narayan temple athur the brihadeshwar temple in thanjavur was built by chola king raj raj chola 1 around 1010 ad dedicated to lord shiva it showcases chola dynasty's architectural brilliance Hence option C is the correct answer. Question 3. Consider the following statements. 1. The regulation of online gaming, betting and gambling falls under exclusive jurisdiction of state legislatures as per the 7th schedule of the Indian Constitution. 2. Under existing Indian laws, foreign investment is allowed in the sectors of online lottery and betting. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? A one only B two only C both one and two D neither one nor two The correct answer is option A Entry 34 of list 2 state list in the 7th schedule of Indian constitution assigns the regulation of gaming betting 
and gambling exclusively to the state legislatures. Therefore, each state in India has the authority to make laws governing online gaming and betting within its territory. Hence, statement 1 is correct. Foreign investment and technology collaboration in the lottery, gambling and betting sectors are completely banned under current Indian laws. This prohibition aims to curb external influence and control over these sectors given their sensitive and often controversial nature. Hence, statement 2 is not correct. Hence, option A is the correct answer. Question 4. Consider the following statements regarding photovoltaic technology. 1. Photovoltaic cells convert sunlight into electricity by exciting electrons and separating charges via an internal electric field. 2. High temperatures reduce the efficiency of photovoltaic cells by increasing the resistance in semiconductor materials. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? A. 1 only B. 2 only C. Both 1 and 2 D. Neither 1 nor 2 the correct answer is option C. Photovoltaic cells, commonly known as solar cells, work on the principle of photovoltaic effect. When sunlight or photons strike the semiconductor material, usually silicon, it transfers energy to electrons in the material. This energy excites the electrons, allowing them to break free from their atoms and become mobile charged carriers. Inside the PV cell, there is an internal electric field created by the junction of two different types of semiconductor materials, P-type and N-type. This electric field directs the freed electrons towards one side of the cell, creating a flow of electric current when the circuit is closed. Thus, sunlight is directly converted into electricity without any moving parts. Hence, statement 1 is correct. High temperatures negatively impact photovoltaic cell efficiency because increased heat raises the resistance within the semiconductor material, reducing the voltage output and overall performance of the cell. Hence, statement 2 is correct. Hence, option C is the correct answer. Question 5. Consider the following statements regarding fiscal deficit. 1. Fiscal deficit occurs when a government's total expenditure exceeds its total revenue, excluding borrowings. 2. A high fiscal deficit always leads to higher inflation in the economy. 3. The fiscal deficit is mainly financed through government's borrowing from the market and other sources. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? A. 1 and 3 only. B. 2 only. C. 1 and 2 only. D. 1, 2 and 3. The correct answer is option A. Fiscal deficit occurs when the government's total expenditure exceeds its total revenue, excluding borrowings. This means the government needs to borrow to meet the gap. Hence, statement 1 is correct. While a high fiscal deficit can contribute to inflationary pressures, it does not always lead to higher inflation. Hence, statement 2 is not correct. Inflation depends on multiple factors including monetary policy, supply-side conditions and demand in the economy. Fiscal deficit is mainly financed through government borrowings from the market, the Reserve Bank of India and other sources. Hence, statement 3 is correct. Hence, option A is the correct answer. Question 6. Consider the following statements. 1. Neurodegenerative diseases involve gradual and irreversible loss of neurons. 2. All neurological disorders are incurable and cannot be reversed even with timely intervention. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? A. 1 only. B. 2 only. C. Both 1 and 2. D. Neither 1 nor 2. The correct answer is option A. Neurogenitive diseases are a type of neurological disorders characterized by the gradual and irreversible loss of neurons leading to progressive decline in brain and nerve functions. Examples include Alzheimer's, Parkinson's and amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. Hence, statement 1 is correct. Not all neurological disorders are incurable. Many neurological conditions such as ischemic stroke, epilepsy, and meningitis can be effectively treated or even reversed if timely medical intervention is provided. Thus, neurological disorders include both reversible and irreversible conditions. Hence, statement 2 
is not correct. Hence, option A is the correct answer. Question 7. Consider the following statements regarding emerging biomedical technologies. 1. Biologics are manufactured using living cells and are structurally more complex than traditional chemical drugs. 2. Biosimilars are biologic medical products that are highly similar to an already approved reference biologic. 3. 3D bioprinting involves layering living cells to create tissue-like structures for potential medical use. How many of the statements given above is or are correct? A. Only 1 B. Only 2 C. All three. D. None. The correct answer is option C. Biologics are large, complex molecules derived from living cells like proteins and monoclonal antibodies. Unlike chemical drugs that are synthesized through defined chemical processes, biologics require advanced biotechnology and are sensitive to environmental conditions. Hence, statement 1 is correct. Biosimilars are not identical copies but are highly similar to already approved biologic drugs, also called reference biologics. Hence, statement 2 is correct. They have no clinically meaningful differences in forms of safety, purity and potency, though they might have minor differences in inactive components. 3D bioprinting uses bio inks made of living cells and biomaterials to build tissue-like structures layer by layer, mimicking human tissues. It holds potential for regenerative medicine, including organ repair and replacement in the future. Hence, statement 3 is correct. Hence, option C is the correct answer. Question 8. Consider the following statements regarding glaciers. 1. Glaciers are responsible for storing more fresh water than all rivers and lakes combined. 2. The majority of Earth's glaciers are located in the Northern Hemisphere. 3. The process of fernification involves the compaction of snow into dense, grainy ice and plays a crucial role in the formation of glaciers. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? A. 1 and 3 only. B. 1 and 2 only. C. 2 and 3 only. D. 1, 2 and 3. The correct answer is option A. Glaciers store about three quarters of Earth's fresh water, making them the largest reservoir of fresh water on Earth, more than all rivers and lakes combined. Hence, statement 1 is correct. The majority of Earth's glaciers, about 91%, are located in Antarctica, which lies in the southern hemisphere. Only about 8% are in Greenland or northern hemisphere, so the bulk is not in the northern hemisphere. Hence, statement 2 is not correct. Fernification is the process by which snow compacts and transforms into fern, which is a dense, grainy intermediate stage between snow and glacial ice. This process is crucial in the formation of glaciers. Hence, statement 3 is correct. Hence, option A is the correct answer. Question 9. Consider the following pairs. We have disorders and their primary effect. A. Alzheimer's disease, gradual nerve cell delay in the brain over time, B. Parkinson's disease, impairs movement and balance, C. Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, which affects motor neurons responsible for muscle movement. How many of the pairs given above are correctly matched? A. Only 1, B. Only 2, C. All 3 or D. None. The correct answer is option B. Alzheimer's disease is a progressive neurodegenerative disorder that affects the brain leading to memory loss, cognitive decline, behavioral changes, problems with words in speaking or writing, poor judgment, changes in mood and personality, confusion with time or place, etc. Hence, pair 1 is not correctly matched. Parkinson's disease is a progressive neurodegenerative disorder that impairs movement and can lead to immobility and dementia over time. Hence, pair 2 is correctly matched. Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis is a rare and fatal type of motor neuron disease. It is characterized by progressive degeneration of nerve cells in the spinal cord and brain, which control voluntary muscle movement. Hence, pair 3 is correctly matched. Hence, option B is the correct answer. Question 10. Consider the following statements. 
Article 18, Clause 1 of the Indian Constitution 1. Article 18, Clause 1 of the Indian Constitution abolishes and prohibits the state from conferring titles on individuals except for military and academic distinctions. 2. Padma Awards is not a title and cannot be used as a prefix or suffix to the recipient's name. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? A. One only. B. Two only. C. Both one and two. D. Neither one nor two. The correct answer is option C. Article 18, Clause 1 of the Indian Constitution abolishes and prohibits the state from conferring titles on individuals except for military and academic distinctions. Hence, statement 1 is correct. Awards like Bharat Ratna, Padma Vibhushan and Padma Shri are exempt as they recognize exceptional work. In Balaji Raghavan v. Union of India, 1996, the court ruled that national awards are not titles under Article 18, Clause 1. Padma awards are generally not given posthumously and a higher category award is only granted after five years unless the awards committee makes an exception. The award is not a title and cannot be used as a prefix or suffix to the recipient's name. Hence, statement 2 is correct. Hence, option C is the correct answer. Now, let us look at a practice question. Consider the following statements. 1. Wetlands are ecotones having land transitional between terrestrial and aquatic ecosystems. 2. The Montreux record lists wetland with deteriorating ecological character due to human activity or pollution. 3. Chilka Lake is the first site from Asia and the only one from India to be included in the Montreux record. How many of the statements given above is or are correct? A. Only one. B. Only two. C. All three. D. None. Provide your answers in the comment section. For more informative content, like, share and subscribe and do not forget to press the bell icon to get the notifications.